Hey everybody, in this video we're going to set up a Django project and run it properly inside of a Docker image. And you can see I've done that right here with the CLI using Docker Run. And when I click refresh, you can see this Django project is running properly inside of that Docker image. Now this tutorial will be useful for everybody, even if you're a beginner or an advanced programmer. Because not only are we going to go through every single step in plain English, but we're going to follow all of the best practices when running Django inside of Docker. Like we're going to have a production settings file to make sure that Django is production ready. We're going to change those settings accordingly, like having a database connection to PostgreSQL instead of SQLite. And we're going to run everything with environment variables so that our secrets are securely stored and we're deploying this image into production following best practices. Now in future tutorials, we'll even deploy this image to GCP and AWS on their server products, on serverless products, and even Kubernetes. And this tutorial should only take us about 10 minutes to complete, dockerizing Django. So without wasting any more time, let's set up this Django project, let's get the production settings in place, and then let's build and run this Django image. Perfect. So let's start by opening up our terminal and in order to build a Django project and run it in Docker, we're gonna need Python 3 and we're gonna need the Docker CLI. So let's make sure we have those now. On Mac, all you need to do is run brew install Python and then your version of choice. So I'll choose 3.12. And for the Docker CLI, you just need to do Docker dash CLI. Now, when you run these, it'll take a couple minutes and I've already done it, so I'm not gonna run it. And if you're on Windows, all you have to do is just run Choco install. So you could do the Choco install Docker CLI and you do Choco install Python 3.12. Now these won't work on my computer, so I'm not gonna run them, but those are the two commands for Mac and Windows respectively. So assuming you have Python 3, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, and you have the Docker CLI, let's go ahead and set up this project. So I'm gonna CD into my desktop I'm gonna make a directory called Docker Django. And I'm gonna go into it, CD into Docker Django, and I'm gonna run code space dot to open this up in VS Code. Now you could just open up VS Code and drag the folder on top. That will do the exact same thing, but it's a fun little trick that I have. Cool. So now let's actually convert this folder into a Django project. So let's open up a new terminal. And first, we're going to install Django into our Python 3.12 path. So I'm going to run Python 3.12-m pip install Django. Now I've already installed it, so it took like one second. Now that we have that in place, all we have to do is Python 3.12-m, and we're going to run this Django command. Django start project. We're going to call it server and we're gonna add a dot at the end. And what that does is it turns this folder into a Django project. So let's run it, voila. So you can see that manage.py is here and then we have a server directory which has our settings, our routes, WSGI and ASGI, which we'll get into later. So now that we have a Django project, we wanna set up a virtual environment for this Django project which is essentially a folder for us to host our dependencies, right? Let's say that you have a hundred Django projects on your computer and some use Django 1.0 and some use Django 2.0. You don't wanna to have to manage all these versions on your computer. So if you could put a little folder in each project to store them and retrieve them, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. So it's best practices and let's do that right now. So what we'll do is Python 3.12-m venv for virtual environment and we'll call it my venv to give it a different name. So you can see that it's getting spun up right here and then we'll activate it right now. So to do that, you just run source my venv slash bin slash activate. And you can see it's running with this extension on the CLI right here. Now, if I run Python dash V, I don't have to specify Python 3.12 anymore because I used Python 3.12 to create it. So it's also saving us some time already. 
Now let's run pip install and we'll install Django. We'll install gunicorn and we'll install psy copg2 slash binary. Worst name for a dependency on earth. So Django is obviously Django and we'll need it when Docker builds and runs this project. Gunicorn is the runtime binary for Django. So when you actually put it on a server and you're saying this is the real deal, run it, run it here on out in production, you wanna use Gunicorn because it manages Django instances and does all this great stuff. This weird dependency is a driver that allows Django to connect to PostgreSQL, right? We don't wanna use a silly little MySQL or SQLite database. We wanna use a real deal PostgreSQL database and this driver allows for that. So let's install all three of these. And now that we have them installed, let's write these dependencies into requirements.txt. So to do that, we do pip freeze arrow requirements.txt. And then you can see that this file stood up right here. Now this is useful because when Django builds this project, it needs to know what dependencies and versions to install when running this project. So this list will do exactly that. We'll tell Docker to go to this file and install all these dependencies. Great, so we have a Django project up and running. We have the dependencies installed, the virtual environment to host them, and we have requirements.txt, so Docker knows what to install at runtime too. Now that the project is set up, Let's get the production settings ready so that when we do the Docker build in the Docker run command, everything is configured in a production ready way. So let's get started. To set up production settings within Django, we're really gonna need to create two settings files. A local settings file for when you're building locally on your computer and you're debugging and doing those things, and your production settings file for when you're running in production and it's the real deal. And right now we only have one settings file right here. So instead of this one file, let's create a folder that has a production settings file and a local settings file. And then by default, we'll pull in a variable to see if we're running in production or locally and pull in the right settings. So to do that, let's create a folder called settings. And to import by default settings, instead of the settings file, we need to add an init underscore underscore dot pi file. And then in this file, we'll decide if we're gonna use the local settings file or the production settings file. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna copy and paste a little bit of code and then explain it to save us some time. So let me explain the code right here. So we're gonna import the operating system module from Python and we'll get our environment variable. And in this case, we're gonna call our environment variable pipeline. So if pipeline is equal to production, we'll import from the production file. And if it's not production, we'll import from the local file. Now, of course, we need to have a production in a local file. So beside init.py, let's create a production.py file and a local.py file. And now you can see we don't have compilation errors here. We're importing properly. Now for the local settings, this will be very easy. All we have to do is go to our settings.py file and copy and paste everything into local. By default, Django is set up for local development. So if we just copy and paste everything in, that will work. And now we're good to delete the settings.py file that Django created. Now for production.py, it's gonna be a little bit different. Let's paste everything in the same as local.py and then make a few changes. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is from server.settings import that get secret function so that we can pull in secrets as environment variables. And we'll delete this secret key and pull it in dynamically. So if we just do get secret secret key, now we can pull it in as an environment variable. Now debug, we should set to false. As a matter of fact, Django provides a warning. Don't run debug in production. 
So let's turn that off in production settings. Now for allowed hosts, we'll set the allowed hosts to all, which isn't necessarily insecure. It just allows anybody from around the internet to ping this server. So if it's running securely and it's production ready and we're ready for that traffic, let's set it up to allow all. And then last but not least, we're gonna change the database configuration. Now I'm gonna pull in four or five environment variables and I'll do another copy and paste and explain the code. So in order to connect to PostgreSQL, we have to set the engine to PostgreSQL. And then in order to connect, we need to specify the IP and the port of that database server, and then provide the DB name, our username, and our password to log in. So it's okay if we don't have anything right now, and in subsequent videos, I'll show you how to stand up one of these databases and connect to it remotely. But this is everything we need in order to connect to a Postgres database once it's set up. So again, starting from the top, we created a settings folder, and when we import our settings, we'll check if we're running our pipeline in production or local. And depending on which one, we'll import the local settings, which is just the default settings from Django, or production, which is where we have our secret key pulled in as a secret, debugs false, loud host is all, and our database is connecting to PostgreSQL. This is everything we need to run Django in production. Now we can run our Docker commands to both build this project and run it, and then we're done. Now that our Django project is truly production ready, we just need to do three things to build it and run it inside of a Docker image. We need to write the Docker file, which are all the steps to build the image. Then we need to run the build command, and then we need to run the run command, and we're done. So let's write that Docker file now. In the root of our directory, let's create a new file called Docker file. And again, it's all the steps required to build the image however we want it. Now the good news is that there are a ton of templates out there for building Django projects. So I took one, which I'll copy and paste, and I added a comment for each line to explain everything. You can find this Docker file in the link in the description of this video too. So the first line from Python 3.12.2 Slim Bullseye this pulls in what's called a base image, which is our operating system and any software installed in that operating system. So we're using a very slim Ubuntu image called Slim Bullseye, and it comes with Python 3.12.2 on it. And I'm using that because that's my Python runtime. I installed the Python 3.12.2. Now, if you used like Python 3.11 or something, dot four, you could just do Python 3.11 dot four. That would also work. But these are the best practices. That's why I'm doing it. Then we set an environment variable called Python buffered, and we set it to true so that when we run our Docker image, we can see the output while it's running. And then we set an environment variable called port, and that's 8080. That's the port we'll expose and run. We set a work working directory called app, so when we run our command, it will be running inside of app, and we copy everything into that app directory. So this dot represents everything in this folder. We're copying into app in the image. Then we're running pip install pip to upgrade it, pip install everything within requirements.txt, which is the dependencies that we froze. And then we're running that final run command, gunicorn, which is the Django runtime in production. We specify the application, the port, and the IP. In this case, 0000, which is the machine itself, and port 8080, the variable. And then we expose that port to the internet. Now that our Docker file has been written and explained, all we need to do is a docker build command. So we'll do docker build dash T for tag. We'll call this image docker Django docker. And we'll tag it as latest. Every time I run a new image, I tag it as latest to overwrite the old. And I specify the dot because that specifies the docker file right in this working directory. This will take a few minutes and you can see each one of these commands getting written. You can see the working directory set, copying everything in, upgrading pip, installing the requirements, everything's done. Now the last command, since there are a few environment variables, I want to copy and paste and explain one last time. So we're gonna run docker run, we're gonna do a port map. 
So we're going to identify port 8080 internally and expose it on port 8000 on the left. I wanted two different numbers so you can understand which one's internal and which one's external. We set our pipeline to production, right, because we want to pull in the production settings. And I set a custom secret key. Now, I just used a bad value, but you should obviously use something very secure in production, very random and long. The database name, username, password, IP, and port, I just set the placeholder values. In a future video, we'll show you how to connect Django to a production database in AWS or GCP, and we'll fill out these values with the correct ones later on. And then we finally specify that image name, in this case, Django Docker. So let's run it. And you can see, last but not least, if we come to localhost 8000, we actually get a not found error. And this makes sense because we don't have a route for the home route right here. So we get a 404. But we have an admin route in a default Django project. And if you go to admin, you can see that working. So this is proof that the Django project is production ready, running following best practices in a Docker image exposed on port 8000. This thing could be deployed to the cloud, run, serve a million users. This thing is good to go. So hopefully this tutorial was useful on how to set up a Django project, make it production ready, and build and run it inside of Docker. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll address them. And I appreciate everybody's time.